Hello everyone, welcome back to the radio shop. Uh, quick repair here. We have a Fender. It's a 1969 model Bandmaster. And I showed this in a video a week or two back. And uh, the guy actually had four amps. And his main amp went down the other day so I'm kind of in a hurry trying to get amps back together for them and we'll get into uh, some of that a little bit later but we want to go ahead and begin to get this fender going for them and uh, for this one here is probably going to have the best sound in any amp that he's got I got the uh, crate amp fixed and got that back to him uh, it was just a dirty pot what they need to do in the video on it it was uh, very easy fix so we're going to go ahead and uh, tear this amp apart and give it a good check out and see what needs to be replaced and get it up and running so he can uh, get back to playing music now before all you nostalgic people uh, fanboys uh, start jumping up and down this guy is not a collector he is a musician he wants to play he doesn't need a a uh, shelf queen so we'll be going in and changing out capacitors and a few resistors and getting it back so to work now I, I've read article the other day about guys saying don't do all that you ruin the amplifier well <clears throat> again we don't need a shelf queen we need a working amplifier and this guy wants the amplifier to work so we're going to do whatever it takes to get it up and running. Let me go ahead and get it cracked open. So uh, what I'm doing now is uh, the guy's Ampeg amp is down. He finally got up with the, uh, the company again. And he found a place in Durham, which is an hour and a half away, that would do warranty repair. So what I'm going to try to do is get this Fender Bandmaster back up and running as quickly as possible until he can uh, get that back from the uh, authorized warranty dealer. So he said that this amp would shock him a lot. So the first thing we need to do is get rid of this old crusty power cord. Put a uh, three prong cord in and do away with the depth capacitor. And then we're going to look the amp over and see just what it's going to take just to get it back running so they can use it for the upcoming week. Strip it apart, clean it, uh, clean all the, the parts and the uh, ground strip up here. But uh, the main thing is get this back going so he can use it for the time being. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this old crusty uh, power cable so okay we went ahead and got rid of that old power cord and you know there's no need of even trying to salvage that the thing is just gone it is completely drive rotted and it's cracking up and you could bend the cord in the middle and it was crack up so you know the outer and the inner, inner insulation is cracked up y'all gotta forgive me I've got some sinus problems going on we're doing a lot of uh concrete grinding at work to get the floors looking better and all that dust has just been in my nose now for two days and it has really worked on me I have allergies to start with so you know you'll hear a lot of problems with my sinuses anyway but uh, we did away with the depth capacitor that is uh, usually the first thing that I like to do is go ahead and get that out get that out of the way you know because if this thing ever shorts it's going to be uh, kind of nasty on whoever's touching the amp and uh, I wouldn't be scared to say that something already shorted don't I haven't even tested it and a lot of times I won't even test capacitors and something like this because the main reason is this thing has been stored in an attic for many years and you know in most attics it gets very hard up there so still we have a problem with electrolyte drying out 
all these old caps. Um, I want to go ahead and start looking just to see what I see. See if I can find anything. And I usually start on one side and start working my way over and looking. And let me reposition the camera here. See if I can get a better view at this. You can see that one resistor right here under the power tube is uh has already changed colors until it's been hot and I know you can't see it on the camera but there's a crack in it right here on the line so we know that was just as bad so when you change this one you know you change both of them you try to put a match set back into it so that you'll have the same you know readings on the both resistors and they're 470 ohm uh, looking at the cap right here you know I don't see no problems with it I don't see no bubbles in the end of it but we're gonna go ahead and replace it too so you know here we got these double or dual electrolytics here um, I think that's 25 microfarad at 25 volts and if you look at this one right here you can already see a problem with it right there where it's leaking here on the uh, one of the legs so we know that's got to be replaced too however you know I, a lot of these other moldy caps right here a lot of times I do not find no problems with them so we'll just test them you know as I'm going through it and if one needs replacing I'll replace it I'm not going to go ahead and jump on them there is another white electrolytic here that will get replaced also and it's a 25 microfarad at 25 volts <clears throat> but you know the main capacitors that you uh, always question it's right here that's under the hood Go ahead and pop this off while everybody's on and watching. Again, this thing ain't been fired up in probably 25 years. So you would think it would be in pretty good shape, but I'll go ahead and tell you the amp has been used. Come on, screw. And all else fails getting in on those pliers. And you can already see the problem with these caps. It looks like this one here is already vented. Yeah, that's electrolyte there. This one here is starting to. Yep, this end one down here blow the other end out just like that one. So those caps are gone. So I guess we need to go ahead and just spare up the solder down and start removing and uh, get some new caps in there. Now I can already, even my nose being stopped up, I can smell these capacitors. And woo, they smell strong. And instead of heating the board up to get these out, I'm going to just go ahead and just clip them right off, right close to the uh, terminal. That saves, you know, putting so much heat on the uh, board. heating up the uh, bore no more than what you have to 
ain't gonna hurt it at all. Okay, that's got all them out of the way. Got two resistors here and two resistors here. Might as well go ahead and check them while we're in here. These you can't check, not unless you take them out. So I'm not going to lift those up and check them two resistors. Okay, our 1K is spot on. Our 47K is checking about 49K, so it's okay. We'll let it go with that. And uh, now we'll go ahead and get the new caps in and get that cover about ready to go on and uh, we'll move on to the bottom well I was checking capacitors just for the fun of it and this is 20 at 500 and if you look on the screen she is uh, checking 56.2 microfarads with an ESR 4.1 so you see they are definitely uh, toast. No good at all. Another 20 at 450. Or 20 at 500, excuse me. Checking 41 picofarads won't even lead the uh, ESR. Definitely no good. And we'll check the last one just to see what it comes up with. I'm change my battery. Looks like it can't even get a reading on the, where that goes. 34 picofarad. It's probably a 20 microfarad cap. I'm going to go this weekend and I'm going to look online and find me a good LCR meter. I was looking at one that uh, our good friend over at Electric Boom was giving away. It's about $60 for an LCR meter. I might take a look at one of those and just try one out. I'm going to go out there this weekend and see can I find a good proper LCR meter and maybe a uh, like a Bob proper ESR meter or something. So when you're working on these old amps, always make sure you check all the connections. This one right here, I don't know how well it's going to show up on the camera. As you can see it's cracked around the leads. Make sure you hit all those solder connections. And also remember, you are dealing with high voltage, so if you're working on these, you're doing it at your own risk, so please be careful. Okay, so all the caps are replaced, all the resistors are replaced. And you remember the resistor that I said had a crack in it? Well, this is the resistor out of the inside tube. Yes, it's old, you know, it's... It's seen some heat, but there's the resistor out from under the other tube. And the uh, bad thing is, the other tube shows a short on the meter. So this tube is kaput. Now the rest of the tubes check out okay. So I'm going to stick another 6L6 in there and next thing we got to do now is do some cleaning clean all the switches and controls and jacks and go ahead and get all that taken care of okay so we got our new tubes in and what i want to do now is uh i haven't cleaned anything yet i just want to look to look at the signal out of this amplifier just to see what it looks like so we'll focus up here on the scope screen and hopefully it won't be flashing too bad. Now it'll self-trigger when it comes on. And now we see the waveform coming up. I 
Yep, exactly what we want is a good, clean signal. No problems at all. I'll turn the uh, Bravado on. Just make sure there's no, uh, yeah, you can see it working right there. You can see a little jump in it. And our photo sensor is flashing. So that looks good. Take that back off. Alrighty. Well, we got all the parts cleaned and all the uh, bad components are replaced. I then checked the normal channel and it sounds pretty good. But we have a problem on the Favardo channel. I'll turn the uh, amp on. We'll let it warm up. And it must be low on oil because it's got a knock in it. Even with the volume all the way down on the Pavaro channel, and I'm burying the main volume control, you can still hear it. Now, notice the intensity. Let's go into the speed. I can slow it down and speed it up. But you see at about 10 it goes out. And then at about 1.5 it goes out. Okay, as you can hear the uh, the ticking is now gone. And you know there's a lot of things that can cause the tremolo to tick. Um, it can be wire placement. Uh, just wires not routed correctly can cause it um, contaminants on the uh, the main board around the uh, optocoupler with your roach if you prefer to call it that um, a lot of different things can cause it uh, this problem was the 12AX7 tube so I replaced that and now uh, no more ticking so that took care of that problem so so far, three tubes had to be replaced in this amp. And there's nothing wrong with the original 12AX7. It uh, checks real good on the meter and everything, but sometimes you want to try a, uh, let's say, junkier tube. Tube is not as good, and that will help solve a lot of these problems. That ticking is just a characteristic of the way the amplifier is designed. It's not a fail. Uh, a lot of times you can put a zero a point zero twenty two microfarad cap across the uh, 10 meg resistor and that'll help filter it out from the oscillator but uh yeah looking good um no problems now i figure we uh just gonna get a little idea of how it sounds now so we'll go ahead and check it out bad sounds pretty decent so uh, I'm gonna call this amplifier ready to go and uh, I'll get the cabinet cleaned up a little bit and we'll get it back reinstalled you know I know for a 1969 bandmaster uh, it looks a little rough but we can you know believe this thing has been well used in its travels but it'll be okay Well, as you see, another old classic back up and running, and it'll go back into service and hopefully make a lot of people happy. Wasn't a very hard uh, project to get back up and running. Just a little bit of board cleaning and some component replacements. You know, three tubes, all the electrolytics, a couple of resistors, and we are back up and going. So uh, the gentleman should be pretty happy that he can. Uh, Come on by and pick this up and uh, 
start playing some tunes. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. I know it was kind of a short, quick one, but lots to do here in the shop. I've got this cold going on in my head, and uh, I'm trying to get over that, so you have to bear with me. Uh, the next week is going to be real busy. Um, I am taking first two weeks of July off. I'm supposed to get a week of uh, June and a week of July, but doing I got to work the first week of shutdown, so I'll be in the plant doing some things, and then two weeks after that, so we can get some more repairs up here on the bench. And boy, do we have a lot of them. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll catch you in the next video.